Hi Derek, good evening to you sir. That's it. Okay, so there's an awful lot of photo. Um, there's a lot of the... Um, ooh, why did that do that? Yes, there's a lot of the um, palette that's missing, I'm afraid. So I can either make a smaller painting and a bigger palette or vice versa. I don't mind which way around I go. Just to let you know that, that there is um, quite a difference there. Right, let's just clean the palette out. You caught me. I made a mistake on the paper. I uh, have one all ready to go which was all sitting here very, very nicely, all taped up, ready to go. And I suddenly realised that I needed rough paper and not the um, hot press paper that I put down. So I was just quickly replacing that while you guys were getting your cups of tea sorted out. They're ready to spend some time with me. Now then, who's here? Um... Ah, John, good evening. <laughs> Just watching your video. Is that you watching my train one, mate? You watching the sanding one? Yeah, a bit of progress. I did enjoy that build. It did take a little while, but I enjoyed it. Uh, Teresa, good evening to you. And Wendy, good evening to you. We are 10, I think, watching. <coughs> or, yeah, 10, about 10 watching. So hopefully we've got this about right. And I've got a little bit of my tea time glug that I've left. <laughs> mm. Cheers, everybody. A very nice little drink after a meal. Uh, yes, watching sanding video. <laughs> Hi, David. Good evening to you. Yeah, um, put some nice comment down, John. <laughs> no, I'm only teasing, mate. See it, you say it as you see it, John. Jim, good evening to you. Um, all the best, mate. Glad you're there. Uh, got to the bit about the central table. Yes, yes, that was a bit of um, a weird one. That I had an epiphany, and then I just hit and went for it over the last weekend i did nothing but build this darn table um i think the local wood merchant keeps supplying me with so many sheets of plywood and so much cls timber i think he wonders what the hell i'm making at home but there you go <laughs> ben good evening to you nice of you to join us sir okay we will start looking at doing a Bought in water. Right. Now if I can make this work a little better. I might have to... I've got a heater on right next to it. It's so cold in here. I don't know why, but it's just so cold. My hands are frozen cold. Um, I, <laughs> I'm just 
I hate, I love sunny climes. I do not like cold winter weather. So I'm sitting on a radiator here, but I forgot to dust it off before I turned it on. Bright, am I? Bright. There you go. Got a lovely whiff of burning dust all over the room. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. It's what it is. It's where we are. All right. Okay. So we must be gone seven. Yes, I better carry on. Glennis, good evening to you. And let me talk about this yacht. Now, I've got several pictures, not just of this yacht, but of other ones very similar on this lovely late afternoon day along the uh, one of the barge matches a few years ago off Faversham and in the Swale. And uh, I just love these pictures. I love the light play between the the bright skies and the and how dark albeit light white sails on the yacht itself but how that much darker and they're also very warm so that's what i wanted to try and capture now i'm going to show you a couple of quick ways of doing things and one of them involves a straight edge i put that in the right place and we will use that in part of our drawing what the heck is that get off out the way thank you right uh, my picture has Boat photo and you reverse. Oh, am I reversed? Um, maybe I am. Shouldn't be reversed, but I am reversed. Okay, bear with me. I will see how I can do that. Edit, transform, flip vertically, flip horizontally. Is that better? There we go, take that in a little bit more. I should be the right way around now, Jim. Can you tell me if that's okay? I hadn't noticed it, mate. <laughs> Someone amongst you lot out there is observant, obviously. The rest of you, not. You all failed. Uh, Steve, good evening to you from a rainy Yorkshire. Ah. Well, yeah, we've got it rainy down here now. We've had it fairly dry all day, but the rain has come about uh, all about five, something like that. Okay, so let's get cracking. I'm going to put in a very low horizon. So I'm going to just measure this as I've got a ruler in my hand. And I'm going to make the sea level probably about four centimeters roughly. Put a little line on my tape, assuming my tape is true, like so. And I can put a very simple line through there, just like that. Very faint, doesn't need to be too much. Just a guide, letting the pencil do most of the work there. And now let's figure out where we want our our boat. And um, this is this, however, is the high line of the shore opposite. Above that, of course, is the hill which we got here, and the higher one beyond it over there. So we want to look at where we want our boat. And we've got to also measure, and several ways of doing it is using a pencil like so. And I just want to get that back into focus. And by, by closing one eye, well, it's what I do. I close one eye down. I put my finger on uh, the tip coming back from the pencil and just looking at the measurement. To me, <laughs> I can't get it right. That's the measurement, okay? Now I'm going to put that to the bottom of the boat and it's about one and a half for the sail from the base of the boat. So wherever I start this here and I'm going to say put my boat a little way in from the edge and I'm going to just draw the transom which has got quite an arc to it. So let's just put the transom in there and that can come way down on the as it's turning and let's see where the boat front is is probably about there it's laying right over something of that nature like so nice stout little fellow so that's just really uh, to give myself a start nothing more I'm going to take that line along there. Now let's just check some of our lines. Let's just check this one here. And I think we could maybe bring that up a little bit, a little gentler. 
take that line all the way straight through there because obviously it's the water is level. You can't see too much of this part of the stern here, although this back does come up, then you've got a lovely shape to this one here. You take that through there, take that down there, take that into there. You can erase any pencil marks you don't really want and that are fouling the look of the whole thing. And you've got a nice straight edge there, bit of a scoop to it. And the shadow will come off like so. That's pretty much our boat. And we can put in the final thing, we can put any change we want to that. We can put in, you know, that side um, banner. And then we've got uh, the front cockpit, which comes up and across like so. You don't see too much of the shape because it comes above the side of the boat like that. So it breaks through the boat's horizon in a sense. If you look at it in that way. Coming down like that. Now I don't want to lay this whole paper full of um, carbon or pencil. So I'm just going to gently take some of that back now. And just put in another line, a more acceptable line. Then that will come into the area of the cockpit on the boat. And around like so. There is a further little shape coming around there. Um, which forms part of that there. Something like that, I think. And that has its own shadow and side that comes down and disappears underneath that because there's a one of these sort of racing type banners here that got the name of the boat. I don't know if it's a racing banner or what really, but it's got the name of the boat on the side of it. And then there are a few people in here which we can put in a little while. But what I was going to suggest was we've got the lean of the boat. We've got nothing more at the moment. So we can do one or two things. When you're looking at houses, when you're looking at angles of houses, then you can always put a ruler onto the shape of the house or on the side, the roof, the angle, the window, whatever it might be. And in this case, a mast. And you could quite happily then put that, and I'm doing it now visually, I'm putting it on there, and it's about, I would have said five to the hour if I had to put it on a clock. So I already know that my mast is one and a half times my boat. And the length of my boat is seven centimeters. So I'm gonna suggest that five to the hour, roughly where that mast is coming out, which is about there somewhere. And if I say that that will be mm, conservative, let's just say uh, up for about 11, just give myself a simple line like so. Now, I can play around with that line if I don't like it being absolutely straight because there's a little bit of flex in the mast. So I'm just going to give that a slight, ever so slight curvature to it. Let that come down. And it is dark, so I'm grateful for that. Now I can put in my um, four mast. Look at the curve, watch the curve, see where it starts, where it stops and come down like so into that position something of that nature just like that up there now if you do need to extend or shorten something a little bit it's not really going to worry too much there's a big billow and, and bow into there and it then straightens out as it comes back to the mast and then we've got the shape which doesn't really start to show until about there comes out nicely forward of the arch of the boat and comes in like that so now we have got our foresail and we've got a lovely modern um, safety um, barrier fencing whatever they call that around the boat we can put that in now now we know where this is we can also take out our little line here get rid of that don't need that anymore just keeps that drawn a nice little bit going like that now we need to look at our main mast and that will be a little higher than where this one finishes and it's coming back at a lower angle it's coming back somewhere like that so it's reducing off some of the angle to the people like so 
and then we're going to take that all the way up to the top up to there and it's got almost a straight line i think so i'm going to take that all the way down one sort of line all the way through like so and that is our rear mast there are several lines that we can put in you can use a straight edge or you can use the, your hand and put them in such like that many other lines too which we can put in okay now there is a little bit of stuff on the top here and actually a little radio mask which i'd never noticed before and little bits of telemetry stuff for navigation i guess and something attached to the actual mast itself something about there i'm not quite sure what that is again probably more navigational equipment and there we are we've got a nice shape to our boat and we've got a nice angle to the boats laying over quite nicely nice part to there that's really tipping quite nicely it's sort of down on this side going into the water and we've got uh, a very dark area in here of course and we've got several people and i don't i'm just going to pull the, my image up to have a look um Oh, yes, that's, there's about four or five people on the back of this boat. Now then, let's just see. I missed some of this. Oh, da, 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 da. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, fine. I've just seen that, Jim. There we are, mate. Sorry about that. Keep an eye on this chat will be good. Um, still reverse. Am I still reversed? Mm -mm. No, that's correct. I think. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm there and the boat's in the right position. I think I'm about right. Um, Trevor, evening Paul, Trev and Margaret here. Ah, good evening guys. Thank you for joining us. There you go. There's a boat back up. You should have the boat now. Jay, hello, boat out of shot. Hardly half can see it. Hopefully that's right now. Camera needs adjusting up. Uh, or down. Can see background above paper. I think that's about right, Jim. Tell me if that's about right. Okay, Ben, that's good. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, we've got the picture there. I must have just caught it, so I'm just going to drag that back down. There we are. Good, 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 good. Okay, we'll carry on with that, and um, hopefully that will be fine. I'm just going to kick in bits of debris on here. Get rid of that. Don't want anything missing up the picture. Right, back to where we were. Okay, so I'm going to run a suggested line through there and I'm just going to mark it very, very gently because I don't want to see much of it. Certainly not as a pencil line. And I'm going to put in a looking to where this is in terms of the hill in the distance. So now I did put some marks on here, but I can't see them now. So I'm just going to put the larger more distant hill through there a little bit through here now that's interesting because my drawing has that maybe it needs to come in a bit like that and uh, showing less of and i think i could actually thicken up my mast coming down into there because it's dark, I can get away with that. It's not a problem. And then I'm going to carry on this hill through here. Something like that. They're much more distant than we've got the other hill. It comes along and down somewhat by comparison. Through there and there. And really actually can come down a lot quicker. And down here to the foreground and the shore. Okay, further along this way, 
is towards Sheppey. Well, the, I'm not quite sure what part I'm looking at. I think this is still Sheppey, but we've got the point along the uh, back end there to where we are. I'm not going to put the um, electrical masts in. They can be happily as they are. But hopefully we've got enough of this going on. There's a couple of windows in there. Put those in. And um, we'll put the detail in the um, sails and stuff a little further in. Just want to straighten that out. We've got a little bit of a kink in that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently take the eraser over some of this. Just You can do it like I'm doing or you can tap it off. Right, so just taking some of the pigment out of it. It's not essential. You've never actually seen me do this before on a drawing for a watercolour. It's just one thing you can do should you wish to do so. Let's take enough. All the putty rubber is doing is lifting the worst of the uh, pencil off so that you've got a little less contamination in your paints further on down the road. You get the idea? Okay. Just going to take the, get that off. Don't want any eraser filings or bits into the paint. Okay, so we are ready to rock and roll. Let's come and look in at our sky. Now, fortunately, everything above the waterline here is darker than the actual waterline, and the water is going to be done through using or leaving dry brush effects with white paper. So there will be some white paper up in here. But the majority of it will be simple, subtle little washes, I hope, he says. So let's choose a couple of brushes to do the job with. A couple of nice ones. I do like this is Skoda. And uh, that's a lovely mop wash brush for the purpose. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the top, is what I'm going to do. Like so, just wet the top of the paper. Some of it will leave little bits of paper where I've missed, and I'm not going to go leaning over it to find out what bits I've missed, what bits I haven't missed. I'm going to take that down to there and there only. Just take that all the way through. Get rid of those couple of hairs in the paintbrush. Didn't see that. Go on, out. Take that away. I do hate little bits of dust and dirt, and there's a little bit of broken hair from the brush itself, I would imagine. Just try and lift that clear. Not worry too much, it's larger pieces can allow paint to pool around them, um, and I don't like that happening. So anyway, right, digress, let's get some colour going. So for this I'm going to be using some indigo. Now I've pre-sprayed my colours just to wet them up a tad. So it's not so hard to get colour off. To that colour I'm going to put in a piece of um, Indian red into my blue. I love this combination of colour. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to just put it around. Now the colours that we're seeing are very, very uh, subtle. And I'm going to leave. You can see where there is broken paintwork and there is solid colour going through right to the edge. Take it all the way off. But because the water is pretty much over, it's and I've missed places, I'm leaving edges here that are very much clouds, and I like that. Getting a little bit of a strong mix there. Let's just take some of that away, come back in, and put some more in over this side. Like so. And then I'm going to come down and make a little, maybe a little bit of vermilion, just a little warmer as this comes down through here, like so. Take some of that, pick some of that out. If you don't like the hard edge, you can soften some of these marks quite happily. And then that's going to lay there. And then I come back in with some more indigo blue, a little bit of the red. That's way too much. Not that you can see it, I don't think, on this occasion. You might see some of it. OK, now I'm going to come through here. That needs to be a bit more blue than that. So let's just come back in and run that all the way through. 
like so. We can come down to our hills, not a problem. Just don't go any further than the bottom of the hill. I'm going to miss out some of the shapes on the sails too. I'm going to lift some of that colour off because I have a distinct colour in mind and it does not involve the blue. So I'm going to take that through there, let that do what it wants to do for a moment. But while I'm waiting for that to happen, I'm just going to come in with a fairly dry brush and carefully, certainly through here, lift some of this pigment back out and away. Just lifting off that brush has got a bit of contamination in, which I didn't see. So I'll work a little bit harder now to take that off and out. Too much water and I do run the risk of having awful cauliflower type things occurring. So I'm just tapping off with this cloth. I would have used paper towel, but I this came first to hand and that's what I'm using. And I'm going to do the same on this one. Just lift some of that off, tap the worst of it away. And once that's dry, that's going to be good. That's going to give me a nice surface to work to. Now here, I don't want this encroaching, but I do not want it pooling up either. So I'm just going to use the same devices method. Damp brush, lift some of that pigment away and out of it. Like so. And the same on this side through here. So get that nice and level there, all the way down there. And that's done. All right, now, ordinarily, I would like to have allowed this to dry quite naturally. I don't have the luxury of the time for that on a stream, of course, so I do have to take and throw caution to the wind slightly and come up with a um, subtle <laughs> bit of blowing with the hairdryer. But I do want to put in a few more dark colours in here so as that first wash has settled down, I just want to come in with one or two other colours while the paint is still damp. Just one or two, just to break up and suggest more lights and darks. Bit, the same two colours, just using the red and the blue, just playing around with the two. But they too will start to dissipate within all that dampness of paint. But it will be less so because it's already started to dry. And I've got to say that this room is really cozy warm now because of the heater. The smell of burnt dust has dissipated somewhat. And so this paint is finding its own um, drying time to be a little bit quicker than it would have been. So I'm going to put a bit more in one or two other places. Let that come down. Quite a large darker mark through there. I'm going to take that on through there, through there, and let that make its own statement, as it were. It's going to come down into that space, like so. Take some away. You can add or subtract quite a bit a lot of the time. All the time the paint is damp, or the water, sorry, the paper is damp, you can get away with so much. Okay. Um, Maybe a little bit more there. And it will dissipate, it will spread, but not as far as the first wash did. You notice how that just became one piece. Now this is still spreading, but by and large, not to the same margins. Now there is a little bit of curve coming here. It's just spreading back in, just taking it off to give myself a good chance. I don't want white paper, it's not what I'm looking for, but I do want to have a good crisp line that is unaffecting the other paint that I will be putting in that space. So that's why I'm taking a lot of care with that part. Just one or two areas through there could do a little bit more. Starting to dry up a little bit now, so just be aware that you've got a working time, which is, I've got to say, because this is 300 pound paper, a good quality rough paper, that that working time is extended. 
had you a cheap paper, have you a light poundage paper, your working time will be severely cut short uh, for this sort of thing. But now we've got a lovely sky working and that's really, that's great. I just want to let that dry up. Okay, I'm going to use the hairdryer. So if you don't like the sound over the uh, airways, just mute, mute it for a little while. And let's just see if we can get this looking okay. Okay, pretty much sorted that out, I think. Uh, where are we? I'm finally able to join a live stream again. What's happened, Ben? You've uh, you have been absent, so I'm glad you're back. How it must be pretty cold out there as well right now. I'm glad to have you back with us. Um, Bottom right is top right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm I'm okay in mine. Is everything upside down, Jim? Because I I can't see what's happening in the player. Everything my end looks absolutely tiggity boo. Um, so I'm not sure. Ken, good evening to you. How's Australia this morning? Glad to have you with us. I'm sure uh, it's very, very early out there. Was it got to be around about 3 o'clock in the morning? Something of that nature, maybe. Just a little before 2.30. Quick lug. Oh. Okay. Must remember, cold glass drips on the bottom, will drip across my painting. Watch that. Done that before. Not a good plan. So... <laughs> Right, I'm getting a bit of a wet table over here. It's just going to dry off a second or two. Bear with me. I've actually noticed that these uh, cleaning cloths are not bad. Keep a little bit of paper towel to hand, but these are these seem to be doing a very good job. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Uh, good. I'm glad about that, Glennis. Thank you. Must be something you're doing, Jim. Must be something you're doing. I have no idea, mate. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, I bet that's nice to be warm. God, dear, I hate the cold, and we've had it pretty cold for the last few days. Not as cold as uh, out where you were just earlier, but uh, still... Not very nice to be too cold. All right, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use some ultramarine blue. And that's got a little bit of um, the uh, indigo into that. I'm not too worried about that. But I only want a very soft value. And I'm going to use some um, raw sienna. That palette needs to be cleaned out. There we go. Get some nice yellow going on in there 
very very pale not too strong a mix I'm just going to run a couple of that sort of colour into the back of the hills and down into the foreground of this hill here so now we've got dry paint to work with we're good to go and we can take that through and there like so and that becomes the shoreline beyond and maybe a little tap of a stronger yellow hint as that comes down through there like that I think that works all right now while that is still pretty much dry let's come back in with some of our indigo a little bit of the other blue and I'm going to come in with that one now this wants to be quite pale so I'm going to put that a lot more water to that and let that run through and I'm not going to put in the lower section of this straight away I'm just going to put in this top section like that take that through to there but then we'll increase the um, information on the nearest hills further on down the road I'm moving around on my chair a lot sorry if that's a little off-putting um, I just need to get different angles because of the lights on the water on the damp paper and it's not quite that easy to see there we are take that down through there and just leave those hills now let them settle down let them do their own thing we will come back to them and see where you want to go with that in the future in the meantime I am going to start looking at this water and this is going to be the fun bit <laughs> he says now mix up some of your colors ahead of the time and I'm going to put in some of the lovely cobalt turquoise color and I'm going to put in a little bit of indigo to that too so it's getting quite dark and dirty and to that I'm going to add the merest touch of the red the Indian red and if you're not sure just test it on a piece of paper piece of white paper nearby I think we're good to go with that I don't really want to put too much in on the top here so I'm going to come through with that line like so take that all the way through and then if you can do it I got a one or two marks at the top here which I've got to put in because I actually started them so I'm going to they're going to break out and I missed a little bit up there with that hill so I am really trying to not put too much information just tapping some of this back off not too much information up there a little bit near the horizon there but not not much feel like I've got way too much damp in the brush just want to almost scratch it off and that's a bit heavy so I'm going to come in there and lift some of that back off not too bad easily enough done take some of that blue and scratch that through there so you're almost skimming the bunts with rough paper of course you've got hills and valleys and a lot of them and so that's what makes this paper the lovely contours that it's got I'm going to take this through here now and the thing about that is that um, if you skim it right with the right amount of dampness to the brush the right amount of pigment on the bristles it's jumping across and skipping over and leaving many of those um, I know I've got my water a little bit out of line there it could have been a little closer higher I mean but not too far out it just skips across and, and catches the, the bumps as it were but what you've got to do is make sure that your line is predominantly level like so being a little quiet just don't want to make too many mistakes with this one just thickening that up as it goes away all right 
that's good. I'm going to turn this heater off. <laughs> and there we go. I think I've turned it off. If I start sweating, you know, I went the wrong way with the dial. <laughs> I'm going to come in here and now beef up some of this. It's a very nice, strong line through the center of this water. Right, so take that across. It actually is a little higher than I've shown it, but actually I'm not going to worry too much because that does uh, give me a lovely edge to the boat to take that off there. And just strengthen some of that, bring that down this way a little bit, just to give it the level that I was looking to achieve. There. Okay, that's fine. I mean, there is a slight, probably if I put a rule on there, there is going to be a slight change. I could, if I wish to, start maybe bring it up a little bit here, just to try and even it up slightly, let that come to nothing. Maybe a little bit more there. But really, that is sort of being all very picky. It's a nice enough piece of broken water. Now we want to make more of the same colour. So more of the turquoise, more indigo into that. A little bit of the red as we did before, just to shift it. And test it again. It's quite a bluish colour. Now I've got a lot of wet paint in the trough, obviously, but I'm bringing out less and less on the end of the brush. And I want to try as best I can to skip across much of this and just leave lots and lots of paper to suggest that there is tons of white water going on. Not white water, it's not rough water, but nice ripples in the water catching that beautiful sky and the late sun in the afternoon. So just be aware that you don't want to go overdoing it. Just try it if you can and leave all these subtle lights and darks happening naturally. And Dry brushing isn't the best thing for your brushes, got to say. Um, but when you want this effect, get rid of that rule. When you want this sort of effect, then you don't really have a lot of option. So I'm just going to thicken up one or two places. It's not going to be just the one colour. We will put in one or two other darks into this as well as we bring this down. There's a lot more weight of blue down lower in the foreground. We can actually bring that into play. Something like that. I need some more paint, a bit more indigo, some more of that lovely cobalt turquoise and some more red, not too much. That did shift it a little too far. I put a little bit of that um, ultramarine into that then just to bring it back. So I can take that all the way through. There's a lot more body of blue though down here than there is uh, up near the boat and beyond the boat. So we're going to Put some of that in so there's a little bit less white but nonetheless we're going to lose all that white look a bit odd against the rest of it if we did so i'm allowing the paint just to break at certain places coming off the back of the boat now and there's definitely going to be some white behind the boat because obviously it's awake and try and definitely leave that little line and then we can bring this up this way and it doesn't matter at this point if we go through the back of the boat I'm doing this deliberately just to show you it doesn't matter but you do need to take the pigment right to the edge of your drawing and beyond if necessary you couldn't get away with that if the subject beyond was a light part of the subject but this we know is very very dark as part of the boat so we can get away with that That's Finish this off to the edge, just gently down to the base here, get that all the way down to the paper, like that. 
Okay, so that's predominantly done. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Well, I hope we got it right now. <laughs> Ah, I get you now. I get you now, Ben. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Jim, I have swapped the position of me in the photo around. Um, I'm not saying that that is it, but that might contribute to the thought that it's all wrong. Um, I'm unsure. It might be. Okay, now I'm going to look at this picture and I will come in with a much deeper bit of green and a bit of indigo. Not too much green, not overtly green. Check that out against there. And I want to come in with one or two other taps, more dark taps. Very much more dry brush because I don't want to deposit too much of this in any one place. You can see me dabbing off excesses all the time. I think I've got too much. I just want to reinforce some of the darks certainly down towards the foreground which helps make those lights stand out even more when you want something to appear lighter make all around it appear darker very very good rule of thumb and it's the basis of contrast there we go now i'm going to take some of that up through here just reinforce one or two other marks as we go on up towards meeting that line up the top there And one or two this way too. And strengthen that there. Now there are other colors through here which I need to introduce as well. And by that I mean there is quite a violet color in the water. So some of that blue, but some magenta into that. And let's just give that edge under here this sort of reflection of the boat, which I need to give that sort of violet tint to. It's not much, but it is there. Then it can come back into what we were previously using, which is that sort of bluey green colour. Now I'm not saying that don't go over some of the white I've left and I'm not saying I'm trying to. I'm just, it's a case that I put the stuff on randomly and it goes where it goes and it touches where it touches and bits get left as they get left. It's that simple. I just want to put a little sense of sort of darkness under there which will help with these horrible marks that I left. Can't do too much with them. They don't really subtract from it too much, but they are there. I might put a couple of boats over there just to lose them a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to come in with even darker marks. That's way too much. Okay, we can use that for a lot more than that. Put a little bit of red into that and come into a pot here, which I can't, you can't, probably can't see that one. A little mixing palette below this. And I'm just taking some of these colors off and just pumping them into place now. So I'm going to put in a few more darks here. I think that's possibly even a little too dark. So I'm going to bring a pot next to it, a bit more water into it, just dilute it. More water will take the pigment down a value or two. Just come in here and run that around the edge of the boat along its water line. And just one or two marks in other places just to start beefing up this water, the sea, like so. Just dragging one or two bits and you sort of the shadows, a little waves in the water away from the light. So these are where the sides of the waves are facing us. And that's how that would look. A little heavy on that one. And let's come back this way and put a few more on here. 
just light, gentle, horizontal touches just to make more information, more about the sea and the waves. A little bit of dancing here, a little tap once in a while, especially as we're coming to the foreground. Little taps of colour. Okay, I'll probably leave that there. Which you, you never do. You sort of see a little bit more. You've got to do a little bit more here, a little bit there. I don't want to do too much more. Not for the moment. Okay, so let's have another glug and let's see where we go now. Okay. Right, so predominantly everything here is done, but before I start the boat, which will be the final part, let's just come back in and let's take a good look at some of our ground. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in one and a bit more blue into the other. And we've done our background, but I'm just going to come down now. It's a little bit heavy. Just come in and soften some of that now. I think oh, I think that I actually want to have another layer in the background. I'm going to take that up and make that the new layer at the background. Bring this down like so. Just reinforce that a bit more. Take that through there like that and through there. And onwards. I'm going to have to let that settle down again. But I just felt that it needed that little bit of extra um, colour through there. And more blue. So I'll just tap that off. That's better. Just a little bit more blue than the um, indigo, just to give that a nice sense. Take that all the way off there. And let's take that down to the shoreline. And let's be a lot more careful this time that I don't encroach over that line. Right, so let that settle down and we'll come back into that and carry on. In the meantime, just checking keep dropping bits of water everywhere. Uh, let's see if we can't get this boat put down and sorted out. All right, I'm gonna come in with a predominantly raw sienna. And they were not using that many colors tonight at the moment. I'm not saying it won't stay that way, but we aren't using that many. So I'm gonna come in, there's a definite lovely light running through there, which I want to suggest into that part and up through the back of the boat. We've got people to put in still. I haven't forgotten them. And then this gets predominantly lighter, but still got a little bit of warmth into it. Maybe even a little bit of violet into that, a little bit of Indian red, more than just the yellow, but very, very piled out. Just a tint, just a lovely tint of color around the foredeck. And then we can come right the way through with this because it doesn't matter at this point. Like so. And we can put some extra bits and pieces into that. And if we want to put any body colour in later, we are at liberty to do so. Or we can leave white paper if we so wish. I'm just going to tap off a little bit of that. So I have two options to go with. Um... Okay, so that now really has to dry. So while I'm doing that, let me come in with this color with some sienna into the um, Indian red, tap it down the side, test it if you wish to. And let's bring that in and across the whole of our sail. Be careful you don't go over your drawn line. Like so, bring it all the way down and this is its first layer. Okay. 
like so. Now I want more light down here, so I'm going to lift some of that out and bring that down with a bit more water involved so that it will dry somewhat lighter at this point. Still have that bit of staining in it, but it will dry lighter. And that's what I'm looking to do. And I use the same effect now on the other side. Again, being very, very careful. Like so. Bring it on down, down, down. Okay, and same thing. Let's just take a little bit of light. I punch out of the pigment by adding some more water to it, and then that will gel and um, hopefully that dark mark stain will disappear with um, help from the edging to the side but that's how I want that to look roughly so we've got light 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 and we've got a darker accent at the top once that's dry then we can come in and this painting is sort of painting itself fairly fast I don't know what that is I'm going to try and lose that without making a horrible mark just something that I've dropped in there. Hopefully try and disguise that if I can. I don't think it's too much of a problem. But if it is, we'll deal with that. But I think we're doing okay so far. Now we need some sol solid colour into the boat so that we can then make that work against all this beautiful sea. And then we've got just the parts of the hill and then the rigging and we're pretty much home and dry. And we're coming out for an hour, which is not so bad. Okay, have I missed anybody on the chat? Let's have a look. Um, ben, you're living in Spain. Yeah, I got that. Um, Jim, hopefully that's sorted out for you now. No, I think everybody that is there is there. That's good. All right. So I'm going to just be patient, really. And uh, if you've got any questions about what's going on or what we're doing, then fire away <laughs> hopefully it looks alright on screen it looks a little bit pale on the screen I don't know if I blast it out with more light it's not going to show up too well so I'm not going to do that but I think we're probably this was fairly light in a way I'm just going to give it a quick glass just to be on the safe side safe enough. Now I'm going to come in with some smaller brushes now. I've got a very small round that I may or may not use. I've also got my rigger which I will definitely be using and probably the very next brush to be honest with you. So I don't know what's happened to that one. It's like the mice have been chewing on it. If you can see that. I don't know what's happened with that one. And it's one of my most expensive ones. Oops, I don't know what's happened with that. All right, well, these things happen. Um, right, now I want a real dark. Now I've got a lot of indigo blue in here. To that, I'm going to use a new color for the evening, which is putting in some of my lovely transparent orange or translucent orange. Now that, with the transparency of the indigo, makes for a really deep dark color. And I'm just going to come in here now and I'm just going to put in the stern of the boat. I'll be very careful. I don't want to lose anything or add anything that shouldn't be there. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of wave and a movement in the water that's suggesting that there is water rushing past this boat. Like so. And then come up to the top. Now you can see why I'm using my rigger. 
nice carefully drawn painted edge and let's come down very very carefully and take the side of our boat through and there's not a lot of water in this mix so I hope that it will dry but I hope that it will um, sort of not need a second application all things can always go wrong with more applications of that nature and I try not to do that there we are hopefully that will be sufficient to do the job okay and while we're doing that let's just come off with slightly bit of red into that and the blue and the dark and just suggest the shadow of the bow like so the little that little shadow comes down and then creeps along with the water line through there like that i think works for me now then i can also use that same little light because it is quite dark but not maybe as dark and bring some of those there and look at the reflection and the line of the boat through here just ever so subtly not too much and a little line astern on the boat out on the wake that it's leaving like so There we are. Just checking the front line of the boat. Coming right down just a little bit like that. There we are. I think that's fine. I'm going to let that settle and dry. I'm going to look at putting a couple of these figures in now. And they are quite tall, which makes me feel that that needs to come down a whole lot lower, as does that. So. I'm actually going to paint the this boom in here somewhat lower than I first or originally drew it. I'm just going to suggest that coming down there so I don't forget where I've got it coming down to. Okay, so I'm going to have to make a little bit up here somehow, but hopefully we will be okay with that. Just felt that it was a little too high as that comes down like so then that does come down at that angle i just felt that my people are going to be around about here sort of thing and they're going to be almost level with it so i'm just going to plant those in place now just some very very scratchy little marks like so and we've got shadows coming over the back little bits of stuff that i can't actually i might be able to hone in on it which is the benefit of having a computer screen there's quite a bit of stuff on the back i'm just going to put this person in here and we've got that other banner that runs around the back something on the back here i don't know what that is but i'm going to put that in comes down to the stern stern cleat I'm guessing some sort of rigging and a bit of a possibly a tiller I don't know I didn't know if they sort of had it I think there is a tiller I think that's been steered by the tiller but I can't see a rudder so maybe I'm wrong I have no idea I'm not a sailor I don't profess to be one so if I said something that, that sounded ridiculous then you'll have to forgive me for that I'm just going to turn it down like so and then I'm going to put these other people in. So these are all huddled down in the cockpit. Like so. Maybe change a couple of colours. Just warm them up a little bit as they come together there. Almost down to that lovely bit of tarpaulin with the name along the side. I'm going to bring a few bits of information there. A little bit across there. Nice little angle subtle bits of marks and I can't tell what half the marks are and I'm going to put a bit of shadow into there as well soon one or two areas just dark now I'm gonna I want to put a shadow in 
here there is a little shadow where all these people are sitting on that tarpaulin that's like so and then it comes across to the edge and then I'm going to use that same color to put the shadow line on the side of the cockpit like so one or two other marks coming around I can't see there's so much happening at this point and I'm going to bring the mask down there into there and it's hidden by so many other bits and pieces that are holding it up. I have no idea what most of it is, but at least hopefully it will look fairly convincing once it's finished. <laughs> I hope. Take that down through there. Now that boat is going to need a second application. I can see it will. There's bits and pieces of rope and stuff on the deck at the front here. And we've got that nice uh, silvery affair like so and uh, one or two up in here as well like that not quite sure I think it comes all the way back to there now once that's dry we can continue that little area there's something around the top end of the boat that's or the front of the boat there Okay, now then, where are we? <laughs> I'm lost. No, I'm not lost. I need to come back in though, I think, with some more blue and a little bit of the red, a bit more blue. I just want to warm up the back of this a little bit more. giving this real depth on the back of the boat well the whole of the boat actually the front too on the bow take that line all the way through carefully hopefully the second application will be sufficient for the job and to that end, I'm going to put a little bit more darks and lights on some of these chappies, chapesses, ladies, gentlemen, whoever they may be. Nice to have a little touch of red in there. Just find a little bit of red in there somewhere. Maybe on one of the people with a red jacket on or something. That works. Just that little red to pop. Once that's dry, I can put the windows in. Then I got the sails to finish off. And uh, now, while this is all drying off, let me just come back in and play around with the background one more time. So I will go back to the bigger brush, and let's take some of our mixes that are still with us. And a little bit more blue. Just checking it out. What a dirty colour, some of it. Okay, so let's just come in with like that. That's not bad. A little bit more water. Playing around. There is a light bit of sand, but I've actually... I don't think it's sand. I think it, they are sort of must be the end of the season, and there are a lot of sort of wheat fields in uh, or lower grass fields that's burned off. I'm not quite sure. To be honest with you, I can't really remember what was happening at that point in time. Um, I know the barge match is not late in the year, and this was most definitely in the barge match because I was on the. Um, one of the uh, stewards boats so I know when I took the photo in that sense but what is causing me concern is why I've got these lovely fields it just must be the aerial perspective on a green field late in the day that's all I can think it is let's take that all the way down through there and carry this on through here just a little bit darker tats in one or two places like that and take that 
all the way through there. Now I do know there are a couple of buildings I can see there glinting on their roofs, but I'm not even going to attempt to put anything of that nature in. It doesn't bring anything to the picture. And that's one thing I do have to say, that often people get so bogged down with lots of detail in their picture, they don't need to. Sometimes a lot less is a lot more. You don't need to have so much information going on, really and truly, to be honest with you. You're merely trying to convey the feeling of the day and the light and the time, and you're not trying to put exactly everything in to the image. There's just no point. You'd never achieve it for one, um, to be quite honest, and you would just... I'll probably like I would probably lose my rag with it. I just could not. I, I'm quite a placid person, but I think that will get to me in the end. I think. Anyway, not a problem. We will carry on. Put a bit more dark into some of this here. Definitely like a tree line running through there. And I'm going to put one in there, which will just help emphasise those between those two. Sales. I know it doesn't exist on the photo, but as I said, it's the painting and um, it's open to some changes. What I would like to do though is I keep seeing that lovely yellowness. I'm going to see if I can't bring that into play. I'm going to bring a little sienna and I'm just going to gently place that in there just to warm up that lovely colour but I don't want it so strong it's a little too strong if honest so I'm going to take that out with some water some clear water let that soak its way through as it were come down to the horizon line settle down before we do any more to that All right, so I'm going to it's going to wreck it somehow, I know that, so I've got to be a bit careful. Just a little tap, just tapping in there and down through there. Okay, that will do, and we will leave it like that for a moment or two. And once that's done, it's bit we can come back in and finish up. How are we doing time-wise? Hour 13, we're doing good. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. I like that. That's good. Okay, I think that area is quite dry. And um, I'm going to attempt. to put the name in. <laughs> oh, I normally run away from this sort of decision. Not too bad, not too shabby. Quite happy with that, that's good. <laughs> All right. That's name of that, if you can't see it on the photo, is Tour Billon. T O U R B I L L O N is the name of this vessel. All right, let's come down with quite a nice dark uh, to suggest the mast. Again, be careful. Um, just take it a little bit at a time. Just darken this up. There we go. Now I want to warm up one edge, this edge, this inside edge. I'm just running a little bit of water, a little bit of color in, in a warm color tone down the inside against that there. Don't worry, it's got a little bit thicker. It will dry lighter. I'm not worried about that. I 
Okay. That's all right. Now we'll look to this forward sail. And again, it starts very dark and silhouetted at the top, like so. But then it does change, and it will get a bit lighter, a bit bluer. But for the moment, I'm just going to take that up and leave that, let that come down this way. much darker line there. We're just starting to put those bits and pieces in play and I want to put in a little bit of deeper colour up in here. Now not as deep as the top of the mast itself but just a little bit more blue into that sail like so and then let that dissipate into just a glazed layer over that pinky colour. Just adds a little bit of weight and darkness and we can go in with a bit more if we want to do that. Just go in with a bit more dark. Let that see how that just touches and runs down that wetness. Look at that. Let that find its own way. Don't worry about it. Like that. That works fine. Going to do the same on this side. Going to put a little bit of darkness up in here. Be careful. I don't put my finger in any part that I've already done. But it's still quite a bit of dampness up there, so I'm going to use that now. Like that, let that come around here. And just soften that transition one more time. Into there. Okay. All right, I can just, while I'm waiting for something else, I can just put in my two windows on the side of the boat like that. And a couple of running lines or boards or something running across the top of there. Put those in. There are some masks, uh, sorry, there are several lines, but I'm not going to try, I'm just going to try. <laughs> very gingerly try <laughs> not too much paint on the brush not too much water just try and suggest those lines that are coming down like so there's a little tap to one there and that's sort of coming down that way doesn't need to be much because it's really easily lost there's a little bit of red rag or something on the top of there put that in and a little bit of a cleat or something there okay I'm not going to try and take them all up your eyes will do all that I need them to do at that end of it I'm going to just play around with the top of the mast here where there's a bit more and there's that thing whatever it is we didn't decide or I didn't decide what that was but whatever it is we'll put that in and there's the top and there is a little line this way on this way and I do believe that that's got a radio mast on the top very very faintly it goes up a little further and we've got a little hook on there and a little line there not too bad I don't think I think we're pretty much closing in now while that's still damp on that side here I'm putting a bit of dark in so that will just start to bleed where I want it to over that nice piece of sail. But I've really got to be patient now and wait for that to dry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look in here and there are one or two small vessels, inshore vessels. One or two just laying off the shoreline like so. And I'm just going to put in simple masts like so, like that, maybe another one there. And they're just indications that there are some pieces going on and life carries on as it were. Put a couple together. 
That makes it a little more interesting on the shore side of things. And there are some stronger darks through here. Just want to put in one or two along that very part of the shore. Be honest, I shouldn't be using that brush. Should be using something a little bit softer just to take that out. I'm going to do bits of bushes and stuff and trees and what have you going along the immediate shoreline in one or two places so I can give that some idea that there is other things going along the shoreline there and it just peters out to nothing. Okay. Now we're on the last bit. Cheers, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again. Right, now then, I have got to work out my blues. I'm going to go in for some ultramarine blue and a bit of the indigo, but I don't want it to be so dark as that. So I'm going to mix around a little bit, but I am using the rigger for this. I think we're pretty much... No, there's a little bit of dampness, so I do want to dry it off one more time. Let's just come in and being a lot of care now. I want to put in the slightly warmer and a little bit of um, magenta with that blue first and foremost. And that will form this part in here. I'm going to bring that down, bring it all the way down the front of the sail like so. And then it gets slightly cooler. It's very hard to see how this is changing, but it does change nice light and dark and it gets that nice subtle blueness as it comes down the face like that. So it blurs out. Just going to give that a slight more shape out than I had it and then that will come straight down and almost comes down into a point ending up about there. So now my line is a bit wonky so let's just straighten that up get it right. Now that I believe is where the sail is pulling round here that's bowed round and that is the other part of the sail that's reflecting dark Whereas the other shapes here and here are merely the dark markings on the making or the form of the sail itself. I'm just going to put in a little dark down through there. And we've got this nice dark down here, which I'm going to save and keep that working. Then we have got to look at these um, support whatever they are, I see them in a lot of sails, I don't know, it's part of the ma making of the sail because they're made in panels, so I'm guessing that these are something to do with that, so we've got a shape that is not dissimilar to that there, so that can be in place, and then we've got one immediately after there, and put that in, And going up, we have one up here somewhere. Uh, 
and then a final one, say about there. Okay, there are some dark lines down, so we can just gently suggest that. And then we have um, a line in there on the sail, one way up near this mark up here. And then we have um, small rigging ones, but we can put those in a moment. I'll just put the one that's there, like that. I think there are lines or marks coming down to there as well. And just keep checking it. There's another one here coming up at an angle. Then we've got small faint panel lines like so, they come up and then they come between, like that. I think I've got that one in the wrong place if I'm honest. We'll just try and ease that out and just put one in there and one up in there. You don't really see too much after that. And there are one or two lines here and I'm just going to suggest those lines on the rigging. I don't do rigging at all, but at least you get the idea that there's something there. Okay, now I'm going to come in with this darker piece that comes around from the top of this sail. No, I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. Just going to tap that off so it doesn't do any more damage. And you'll see what was going on there. It's still damp. I didn't realise that that was still wet. But it does make a difference. Okay, let's bring that little line. There's a line down there. Put that into there. There's one out through there. Put that in. One or two others coming down the side, like so. And then there are little. I don't know. These are uh, sewn into the sheet and the tassels. There, obviously, once the sheet is rolled. They can be um, tied round. Just a couple up there. Can't see any more. And of course, we've got, most importantly, mustn't forget, a bit of cadmium red just for this job. It's a dull red. And of course, you've got the numbers. And I can't really see too well the numbers, but it's 5524Y. That's not, it's 6524Y. So, okay, let's just see where they are. They're under that one there. So let's just put in, uh, can't see too much, 6524, and it's uh, old fashioned four, I call that, and a Y. Now that's fine. Now we've got to do it somewhat a little darker. Still the same red, still red, but a duller red, of course. And we've got to put it in reverse. So let's bring it up here because obviously it shows just as nice red. Oh, that's a little bit too light. Need a bit more paint. I'm going to put in a reverse of a six and a five. <laughs> kind of a five. <laughs> oh, it gets good. And a two. I think. <laughs> and just about see the four as it disappears. But there we are. <laughs> Bit of fun. I still got to do this line here. Get that off of there. And uh, I think we're pretty much home with trying it. Let's take that back to there and let's give this some dark. Hopefully that will be dry now for me to just finish this piece off. Let's fingers crossed we don't have any more problems with the bleed. No, we're good to go. I'm going to take that through there. It's quite dark but it does descend to a blue colour. Get the outside line in as we come down.
always got to be careful. I mean, you can just as easily wreck a painting on the last brush mark as you can at the very start with the first. Just always bear that in mind. Picking this up a little bit as this comes down. Like that. And then it comes all the way up through there. Like so. Now there is quite a bit of a dark right in there. It's going to bleed up. I'm worried about that. So you keep seeing other little lines and things, just just little bits and stuff. A little bit of darker edge of shadow around the top of that there. That goes into that sign. A little bit at the base of the sign. Okay, just a quick look at it. And I think we are pretty much done. I've enjoyed this actually, I love painting boats. I'm actually going to do a very, very similar one. Maybe not this one, but a very similar vessel in a very similar setting uh, next week as an oil. And I just feel that it would be nice. Uh, it's got a lot of red sail in it and that will work very very nicely. Thank you very much. Just make sure that these people are looking like people. And that does jut out a little bit on the front. Let's give that a bit more presence there. Yeah, there you go. Not a big problem at all. I'm going to sign it away from the boat itself. Just going to give this a bit more room. I could put a wash through here, but I, you know, I think I might just do that. <laughs> this is when I'm going to regret it. I know. It's going to go horribly wrong now. All right, let's come in and let's pay, throw caution to the wind. Put a bit of blue and a bit of that lovely green. And looking at it, maybe even a little tap of magenta just to shift that to the lovely purpley colour. Test my colour. That has to be very dry. Let's just come in and just put that in. Make some more of it. I think that was the right choice. It just helps to reinforce um all that weight above it in terms of that white water above. Now I've done that, I actually feel like I want to come in with even deeper through here. Yes. Was the right choice. I looked at it and I thought, should I, shouldn't I, shouldn't I, should I? And I'm rather glad I did. one or two of them up, other statements to make. Yeah, I think that was the right choice. Part of me wants to even go further, but um, <laughs> probably I shouldn't. as he does it. Just a little skate along the very bottom edge. That 
sets it up nice. It frames the boat in place, highlights all that lovely water beyond. I think that works. All right. Yeah, cheers, John. I think it just brought the whole thing up and it, it just gives weight to the foreground, which is really important. And then that will set everything else up. And we've got the white sails that are not white. They're this lovely colour. What I haven't done, I just realised, I suppose I ought to do that too. There's some very, very faint uh, lines on the makeup of this one. One there. There's another one there. And there, as that goes up. I don't think it needs any more than that. Just to, I forgot them. And that kind of needs to come over a little bit higher. It's got a little bit of a shape there. And just a little shape there. Now, I got that bit too dark. So let's just play that out to the edge. That's not a problem. Perfect. Well, it's, nothing's perfect, I suppose, but it's nice. I like it. All right, so there we are. Um... <laughs> yeah, it was a good decision. It's always a little bit... I don't, I don't, I do. I've do. i got to think it was right. I think it was the right thing to do. So let's just um, dry this note. I want to take the tape off, but I dare not until that's dry. So I may have to forego the privilege because that's a lovely bit of wet there and it will cause problems for me. And I don't really want to dry it uh, with, um, with anything, you know, with the um, hair dryer at all. I'm just going to leave that to settle down. All right, people, there we are. One uh, yacht off of the uh, coast of, or in the swale, as it were, coast of Sheppey, uh, one of the bars matches. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun doing it. Mm. And don't forget, if you're watching this and you don't subscribe to my channel, subscribe to it. And put comments underneath this video and any others of mine you watch. By adding comments to my videos, you actually interact with me because I answer them all. And the thing is that the algorithms, what YouTube want to do is keep people watching videos. That's what that's why it's there. And that's their whole ethos is to keep people watching videos. <laughs> and the thing is that the more people interact with uh, content creators like me, adding comments, putting likes down, adding, um, sharing it, all these things and subscribing to it. All these things really help me and help me grow my channel because it shows YouTube that it's worth promoting my channel. So if you do watch one of my videos, whether it's be on here or whether it be one of my train ones on Sanding Junction, either one, doesn't matter, but just always remember to put a like on it if you would. As long as you've liked it, of course, if you haven't, then I wouldn't want you to lie. <laughs> but put a like on it and share it with friends. If you've got somebody who you know paints and would like to see this, share it to them. Tell them to get on and watch it. And uh, subscribe to it and all these other things. Don't forget, uh, there is a Patreon too. If you are a painter and you want to learn more from me, I am adding content to my Patreon each and every month certainly and more recently i've been able to spare a bit of time and get a bit more uh, put into that as well and with that said it all the money that comes in from patreon helps support all my efforts not just here but also on the patreon so take a look at it there are several tier levels you can get involved with worth checking it out and seeing if you want to get involved and you'll be most welcome on board that's the sales pitch over. And um, another thing to bear in mind that on my Instagram, some of these paintings and others do come up for sale at a reasonably good price. So if there's anything you fancy uh, owning in, in all the paintings that you see me do, then just give me a message and I'll let you know how much it is. And if it's for you, it'll be yours. If it's not, it doesn't matter. Right. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, lovely.
Ben Ben. <laughs> There's two Bens. That's going to get confusing. Ben, uh, cheers, mate. Uh, and Ben from Spain, thank you so much. Um, that's very, very kind of you, Ben. I really do appreciate that. It really does help. And uh, I thank you for that, doing that for me. But yeah, there you go. Another evening over. And uh, it's time to bid you all farewell. My weekend has got one more day to run. I say, I say it's got one more day to run. Actually, my Monday and Tuesday is just as busy as any other day of the week. But uh, I'm at home and I'm filming content. And I actually filmed a nice uh, oil this morning, uh, which will be out in a couple of weeks. And uh, there will be a new video on Friday, which this week is a fallow deer from Richmond Park. So that's something I hope to look forward to in oils. There's all the advertising. I can't think of anything else to advertise now. I've said everything, but I'm sure there'll be something. But just like, subscribe, share, comment, all those things on every one of my videos that you watch. And may I point out on anybody else's video that you watch and like. If you watch other artists or even if you watch how somebody cooks peas. I don't, <laughs> sorry about that. But whatever. Just if you like the video, like it. Let them know. And it helps them as well as you're helping me as well. Anyway, peeps, I'm now rambling badly. So I'm going to bid you all farewell. Stay safe in these times of very great uncertainty. Um, we don't know where this trouble we're in right now is going to end up. Uh, let's hope that it peters out very, very soon. Cheers, Derek. I appreciate that, mate. And uh, thank you very, very much for being a part of the evening. I'm just going to wet some of this, uh, take some of this dampness off my table before I float away. I've got a little bit sloppy with the water. There we are. Most of it's gone. All good stuff. So I'm probably going to film another watercolour in the morning. I've got this uh, sheet that I wrongly put out earlier tonight, so I will make a film of we're using that in the morning i think so there you are ken breakfast time for you say yes well deserved thanks very much for joining us all the way from australia uh yes john take care mate and uh i hope you got the end of my boring little video on sandling <laughs> and uh Teresa, great thanks very much uh, see you next demo and that'll be Sunday for my pa uh, Sunday that'll be Friday evening for my patrons so don't forget patrons Friday evening at seven o'clock don't be late or you'll have to fill in a form and tell me why you were so <laughs> but there you go um, so don't forget that can you take the tape off yet oh, okay let me just give it a quick blast and then I will how's that Quick blast. Okay, I'll start at the top. We'll take these top ones out first. Right, now I'll take these side ones off. Gently does it. Good, good so far. Let's put one up. This is the one.
there we are nicely done there we are peeps all the tape is off and you can get to see the whole thing as it is there we are Ah, uh, cheers. That's very kind of you, John. Thank you so, so much. I've got to say, mate, I watched your signage one uh, on on Piccadilly Sidings. I was amazed. I felt you'd done a stunning job. And uh, you don't happen to share 3D printing files, do you? <laughs> I'm only joking. But, uh, well, no, I'm only half joking. <laughs> I don't have the skills to uh, create things like that, but uh, certainly very useful to have a play around with that. But yeah, so if you do happen to have an STL file going begging somewhere that you don't mind putting on down the wire to me, I'd appreciate it. And if you do, I understand totally, mate. It's only, it's only just, I'm only just saying, but that you did a cracking job, gotta say. I really was impressed, really was. Well, <laughs> virtually anything that's double O and useful <laughs> anything that I can put in my um, any photon uh, I've got a photon S mate I've only printed one thing on it since I got it and they were some stillage crates that uh, young James Warner gave me on a file um, as a test print and I did those I've still got to paint those but it was fun I just wanted to do what I do want to do is I've got to figure out how to start drawing up. I want to do my own um you've seen what the plan is for the harbour section and I want to create my own panels for harbour walling. Uh really detailed and steps and stuff like that. That'll get to that. But yeah, all sorts of things really. There's so much that you can't get normally uh ready to run as it were and it's just nice to be able to add very individual things one day i will get to learn how to design something three-dimensionally on one of these programs right now i just don't have the time i can't even find the time to build my new website properly much less anything else so like all things it has to wait a little bit but anyway there you go <laughs> i've still got to send those little figures up to you john i've, I've got your address mate i just got to Get, I've got them in a box actually, ready to go. I just haven't put them into the post box. So I will get that. Um, uh, that's very kind of you, mate. Um, that's very, very kind of you. I've got to get some station signs that I can make Ashford signs and sanding junction signs and things like that. And I like that billboard type thing. And I know there were some that they used to have smaller ones on sides of gates and fences back in the day um yeah all sorts of things anyway i love you i love you printing uh making stl files till you see them in your sleep mate <laughs> anyway everybody it is almost two hours 10 minutes to in fact so i'm gonna let everybody go there's only a couple of people now still watching so i'm gonna wish everybody all the very very best and and please whatever you're doing just stay safe doing it and keep your distance from people uh, there's a lot of friends out there i don't want anybody that i know and i don't want anybody really i don't know um going down with any of this stuff so yeah yeah i can do that i will do that john i will do that mate all right okay I'm going to switch off now. I'm going to go and finish this, which has gone a little bit flat, but uh, it will still taste good. So take care, everybody. I don't know who's still watching, but whoever you are, the 10, 9, 8, <laughs> I'm going down fast. I'm going to say cheerio. I take it we had no Judy tonight, Wendy. I didn't see her. I didn't see the name come up. Um... But yeah, there you go. All right, well, I'm going to say cheerio. Thanks for joining me.